In my never-ending search for video ideas, I came across a video where somebody suggested that by setting a plastic footing on top of your uncompacted soil is going to work as well or better than a concrete footing that is going to be setting on top of well-compacted soil. And I'm not about to suggest that there aren't going to be reasons why you're not going to install a concrete footing. And one of those might be because you're dealing with deep frost lines where you might need to go five or six feet down into the ground. But if you do, I just want to make consumers aware of some of the things they might not be mentioning at their websites or in their product installation literature. So if I do end up setting a footing that's made out of concrete, plastic, or what Ever kind of materials on top of uncompacted soil. You just need to be aware of the fact that it could sink into the soil or erosion could come and go underneath the footing, around the footing, and remove some of the soil underneath your footing and allow it to sink into the ground. And of course, once it sinks into the ground, you now have a deck that is out of level and in some cases might not be safe to walk on. And some of you might consider solving the problem by adding more of these footings to support your beams or other deck framing support members. And if that's the case, I would like to throw this one out there. You might end up with a situation where you have one of them supporting more than the others, especially if some of them sink into the ground and leave two of them supporting most of the weight anyway. So you might have this one supporting the weight and this one, and the others aren't doing anything. Now, some of you are probably thinking, can't this also happen to a concrete footing? And it can, but the chances of it happening are gonna be a little bit less if they're buried a little bit deeper in the ground. For example, you might not be dealing with as much of a problem with erosion or soil compaction as you will with something that's just sitting on top of the soil. And of course, some of you are probably thinking, well, hey, why not bury some of these to where they're sitting on top of the compacted soil? And I don't have a problem with that as long as the manufacturer allows you to do that. Another problem that I've noticed with some of these products is that they're not going to provide you with the minimum distance of six inches between the lumber and the soil. And this is a common building code used for a variety of different outdoor or exterior sections of a house, including a deck. And the last thing I want to mention is that I noticed some of these don't have any connecting points like the building hardware here that's going to allow the beam to be connected to the concrete footing securely. And if this happens and there's a strong enough wind to raise the deck, you could end up with the deck falling off of the supports or end up with some type of a hammering effect as the deck pounds the beam and the footings that are sitting on top of the soil a little further each time into the ground. And hopefully some of this makes sense. However, if it doesn't, or there's something that I should have mentioned but I didn't in the video, feel free to share that with us in the comment area. Because if there's something I'm missing that makes these products super awesome, I would actually like to see it. Otherwise, why use them?